Got him. What's up, guys? Today I have something for you that I haven't actually seen in a while, and that's a gel blaster specifically designed for new players. It's produced by SEMA and imported into Australia by the retailer Tech Toys, who label it the M4 V12. It has full metal internals, including a factory radius SEMA gearbox, but by going cheap on the externals, they've managed to get the price down to $349 before any discounts. And with my code BRAD, you can obviously save some money on top of that. Straight out of the box, this blaster shoots an average muzzle velocity of 300 feet per second and outputs 20 gels per second. Quite impressive for a stock gel blaster. In the box, you get the blaster itself, a 300 shot capacity magazine, an 11.1 volt battery, a charger for the battery, a pack of starter gels, some dubious at best safety glasses, I wouldn't trust these, the lenses keep falling out of the frame. Instead, get yourself a pair of workshop safety goggles for a couple of bucks. You get a hop up, a metal flash hider, and a functional replica ACOG sight. Because this is marketed at beginners, I'll do a quick how to use, and then after that, I'll get onto the review. If you already know how to use a gel blaster, you can just skip ahead in the time codes down below. If this is your first time using a gel blaster, the first thing you wanna do is hydrate the included gel balls. Just soak them in water for around four hours. Most commonly, people grow their gel balls in a two liter soft drink bottle. After four hours have passed, drain the water and you're ready to go. Generally, I like to do this the night before a skirmish, but if you store the gel balls in an airtight container, they'll last for about a week usually. Next thing you want to do is charge your battery. The included charger isn't the greatest, so I'd recommend upgrading to something like this IMAX B6 eventually. You'll also want to get additional batteries because I don't think this one will last most newbies an entire day when they go heavy on the trigger. This battery uses a mini Tamiya connector, so make sure when you buy spares that they also have the same mini Tamiya connector. If you're new to LiPo batteries, make sure you charge it away from anything flammable and supervise it while it's charging, preferably inside a fireproof bag like this one. The included cheapo charger has an LED light on it to tell you when the battery is fully charged, and it just plugs into a USB connector. With the battery fully charged, open the rear of the buttstock by pushing on this lever at the back and folding the rubber padding down. Plug in the battery's mini Tamiya connector and place the battery inside the buffer tube. Close up the buttstock to hold the battery in place. Filling up the magazine is fairly straightforward. There's a door you open at the top. Pour your gel balls in until full and then close it again. Insert the magazine into the blaster and it's ready to fire. I'd recommend getting some spare magazines or just reload the same magazine in between respawns at the skirmish. One cool feature that the M4 V12 has is charging handle mag prime. When you first insert a fresh magazine, there won't be any gels in the feeding tube yet. So normally, your first couple of seconds of firing, nothing comes out. With Mag Prime, you can preload the mag's feeding tube by simply pulling on the charging handle. It's also much quieter than firing the blaster. The M4 V12 has its selector switch on the left-hand side of the blaster. No fancy ambidextrous selector switch on this one. It has three modes. Safe, you physically can't pull the trigger. Semi, it'll fire one shot per trigger pull. And full auto, which is what most people use. With basic functionality out of the way, let's get to the overview of the blaster. The M4 V12 is externally made of nylon. There's quite a lot of play between the handguard and the receiver. You can hear that in the microphone. Externals are definitely where the cost savings are on this blaster and as a result, it only weighs 1.8 kilograms. Internally, it sports a factory radius metal SEMA gearbox, metal gears, and a piston with a full metal rack. So for a beginner blaster, this should be quite durable indeed. It has a 38 centimeter aluminum barrel with a 7.5 mil internal diameter and 9.5 mil outer diameter. In the box, you get a hop up, a hop-up is a device which adds backspin to your gel balls, increasing range. The type they've included friction fits between the inner and outer barrel, which actually helps stabilize the barrel. When you're at the gel ball skirmish field, you can dial it in by adjusting the grub screw on top. What you want to achieve is a flat trajectory for your gel balls, so keep tightening the screw until, rather than curving down, the gels keep going straight for about 30 meters. Some external components which are metal rather than nylon include the outer barrel, 
the flash hider, which can be fitted over the hop up once you've got it dialed in for style points. And it also has a metal trigger. Up top and on the sides, it has Picatinny rail, so you can add attachments like a flash slide or a camera. Also in the box, it has a replica ACOG sight. Personally, I think four times magnification is a little much for gel ball, but it does look cool and it's functional. Definitely better than those fake plastic ones gel blasters used to come with. If you want to actually use a red dot sight on a gel blaster though, I'd probably recommend something with one times power, which is no magnification. And it'll simply give you a point of reference for when you're aiming and the gel balls will kind of go around where you're aiming. Straight out of the box, here's how the M4V12 is shooting velocity wise. 296. 270, 297, 299, 313, 295, 295, 311, 305, 290, 300, 299, 307, 297, 295, 311. It has a high of 313, a low of 270, and an average of 299, which is just below the velocity limit at the field here. On full auto, straight out of the box, it has a rate of fire of 20 rounds per second, which is really nice for a stock gel blaster. Now here's how the M4 V12 shoots for accuracy at 30 meters. Okay, the curbing to the right, that means there's a bit of wind. So if we angle the blaster a little to the left. At 30 meters, the blaster has a grouping about one meter wide, which is pretty much the same as any other gel blaster I've used before. Whether it's a thousand dollar plus blaster or even this cheap one, they seem to all shoot about a meter grouping at 30 meters. But finally, let's see whether it can hit a target at 40 meters. At 40 meters, the grouping is pretty much double to two meters wide. If you use it on full auto though, a short burst should score the kill. So what do I think of this blaster? Well, for a blaster that's cheap and aimed at beginners, it's honestly not that bad at all. 300 feet per second velocity average straight out of the box and 20 rounds per second fire rate on full auto is nothing to laugh at for 350 bucks. Internally, it pretty much has the same SEMA metal internals as a $600 blaster, so if you don't mind the nylon cheap externals, this is a good option. Getting new people to play gel ball is important if you want to see good turnouts to events. And while most of the seasoned players have moved on to expensive builds, it's good to see a blaster catering to the newbies. Let's end today with some gameplay footage using this blaster at the Battle for Waterloo Skirmish Field in South Australia. Let's see how it stacks up against some of those expensive, more experienced players' builds.
Got him. To your right a little more. Pie out a bit more in the tree. Oh, I must have got him. Yep, got me. That's it for this one, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Click on my profile icon to subscribe to the channel. And here's two other videos you might enjoy. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.